Yay, everybody clap the squad. Oh, okay, gotcha. Dude, what do you guys think? How would your life be different if suddenly you were blind? What were you guys talking about? Sophia, let's go. I would lose the quote job I have at ACT. I'd be covered for the like plays that they do. I own, I earn like a hundred bucks per thing. That's most of the money I make. Covers? Like posters. Like oh, posters. But, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so probably couldn't do that at least as well. Right? As well. <laughs> Okay, because why would that make you right? Okay, you couldn't see the paper. You couldn't see what colors you were using. Welcome to my life. Um, okay, what else? Why else would it be difficult if you were suddenly blind? Learn, don't you think, man? Okay, right. How come? Because what, what's your favorite sport? Football. Why do you need to have eyeballs to do that? Why can't you just like run down the field and just scream so you can use like echolocation? Could you do that? We're going to work on that for me. Let me know how it goes. Okay, so what about if you were blind your entire life, you wake up this morning and you can see? How different would your life be? Confusing. Confusing? Okay, why? With the sun, we we'll just be like, uh, well, they thought I did, but it just sits there in the, at in the atmosphere, and then they're like, you should have thought the sun made sound. I mean, I guess if you just saw the sun, you'd think that it would make sound. Emily, and then we'll go ISIS. I don't know why. And Sophia, you, you guys are twins. <laughs> are you? You guys could have lied to me. I don't know. Sophia, what are you thinking? I, uh, uh, sorry. I would say it'd be very happy and then very disappointed at some point because, because on one hand, you see all these people around you, close friends, family, you, just, you finally see what they look like, you differentiate them based on something other than their voice, but then like you imagine things looking a certain way and okay. you're just like, yeah, I'm more disappointed than I thought it would be. What would it be like if you were dating somebody and like suddenly you could see and you're like, I thought you were a lot more attractive than you You've never seen the movie standards, you don't know what attractive is yet. No, you, you've seen those movies with blind people, I don't know if this is real, they like feel people's faces, I don't know. That's ISIS and then, uh, we'll go over I don't know. Um, I think, <laughs> I think I'd be like, I'd be like, Okay. Uh, I mean, suddenly, like, I assume you'd want to learn how to drive and, like, do other things that people with the site usually do. Let's go. Um, I mean, the, there's a reason that you learn, like, colors when you're a kid. And trying to learn that as, like, an older teenager, young adult, like, that's really difficult. And, like, also, I'm sure with a sibling just, like, Like, yeah. can you imagine not? Well, okay, so most people aren't like blind, blind. They can like see like light or like sometimes colors and stuff like that. Um, but to be like kind of like taking in light and it's like full and dealing with all this other um, visual stimulation would be super disorienting. Yeah, I think that, that's totally fair. Um, so guys, I joke around like I'm colorblind. I just really am looking for pity. It's not that bad at all. Um, I can still see colors. I just see them um, a little bit differently from people that can see colors normally. Uh, they're more dull and they get colors mixed up. Um, but they have uh, glasses that correct color blindness, at least yes. to a point. Um, I have a pair of them. Um, the first time I put them on, 
like I went to, I think it was, there was a flower, I think it was like an orchid or something, but it was like the, like it was a purple orchid and I've never really seen purple before. Like it was intense. Like it looked like it was glowing. It was like the coolest thing ever. Cause like I had my perspective of what I kind of thought purple was. I'm like, it kind of looks like blue to me. I don't know. And then holy crap, I know what purple looks like. So like my perspective on things were a little bit different. Also sunsets are so cool. I don't know, did I shoot your hand this morning? Yeah. <laughs> Jermaine, what's up, man? How's it going? Good. Okay, so for today, I want you guys to just take the next half a minute or so. I want you, well, I lied, we're going to take more time. Um, if you don't have your scriptures today, journal or something to write on, go get it. Go. Wow, everybody has a scriptures today journal? I think that's a lie. You just need something to write on your scriptures today journal, whatever. Something that you're actually going to like keep track of where it is. You guys need pens, April can throw pens at people. I think you have a box of pens by hand. Yeah. April, did you know that like I really like your name because I was born in April, so it's the greatest month ever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's what I'd like you guys to do. Once you have um, something to write with, um, I want you to take we're gonna take like five minutes. If we need more time, that's fine. Um, I want you guys to really focus on this. I want you to think about a challenge, a question, something that bothers you, or that you just really need help with, kind of related to the gospel of Jesus Christ, or just life in general, okay? Um, I want you to really think about this, and I want you to write it down somewhere that you'll actually remember where it is. So in your phone, scripture, state journal, margins of your scriptures, I don't care. Um, I want you to really take some time with this, uh, because we're going to work with these questions a little bit today. Okay, make sense? Cool. Okay, you guys got like five minutes. Let's go.
if you guys don't know the rhythm. to share specifics at all um, but I want you to think about your question challenge tell me what would be the most unhelpful thing for somebody to say to you when you're thinking about this challenge or question yeah let's go here's how to do it <laughs> like here I have experienced exactly what you're feeling here's a step-by-step -step process how to deal with it right specifically when they don't ask right yeah you're like I'm good, thank you. Why is that difficult or annoying? Okay, that's where did I see your hand over here? You sure? Okay, yeah, Alan, let's go. Um, just do it. Okay, why would that be frustrating? Um, well, we can have a lot of reasons. We, uh, we have like a thought process behind doing this. Yeah, like just figure it out, Alan. Like, what the heck? Why are you struggling so much? Right? Uh, Robert, what you thinking? What would be like the most unhelpful thing for somebody to say to you when you're like thinking about this question or challenge? Stop thinking of it. Okay, right? Like, why are you struggling so much? It's like easy. Do you have an idea what I go through? Okay, Malia, let's go. Um, when they, it's kind of like that they're trying to put solutions in there. Like, well, have you tried this? Like, this works. Right, like when uh, when you're depressed and you're just like, just just don't feel depressed. Got it. Hadn't thought about that one. Thank you. This will change my life. Okay. Anybody else? Let me know what you're thinking. What would be like the most unhelpful thing for somebody to say to you? I'm gonna choose somebody to answer that question for you. Anybody in this room? Thais, you got it. <laughs> well, Thais, what do you think? You think about your question or challenge. What what would be like something that is not helpful at all for someone to say to you? <laughs> what was it? Basically, just do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. just figure it out. Yeah, just figure it out by yourself. Okay, would that make you upset? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Right? I think that it's worse if you ask for somebody's help and they're like, yeah, you're fine. Let's figure it out. It's good. Isis, let's go. Um, like, if you and your sister are talking and like they ask you and then you're like, oh. Like, you know, like how some people are like, oh, how are you doing? And, they're, and then some people, like most people always do good, but then some people are like, not good. They just like say lies. They're like, oh, I need to need you to tell me that or stuff like that. They're right. <laughs> They're like, yeah, I just kind of wanted to know how you were doing yesterday. I don't really need to know like your full story. Yeah. I have my own problems. Yeah. Okay. They like push it off. Yeah. Why would that be frustrating to you? Well, one, they they ask like how you were doing, and you tell them the truth, and they're like, oh, I thought you were just going to do something. <laughs> You're like, we've already taken the horse out of the barn. Let's ride it and see where it goes, right? Okay. Um, anybody else? Yeah, Malia. Yeah, someone needs to come out of my group. I might as well get a conversation. <laughs> You're like, I, I might as well like get at least a small amount of comfort, right? Someone to listen. I feel like all those situations are especially terrible if it's someone that you trust and care about and that you've like spent time with before. It's like, are you serious? Like, you know what I need, don't even right now, okay? 
Cool. So we are going to hear from President Nelson about a situation that he had in his family. this when you become a seminary teacher that Satan tries to possess all of your technology so it doesn't work. That is not doctrine. I have heard that before actually. That's concerning. <laughs> So just stare into President Nelson's face. <laughs> you know when we were just talking about unhelpful comments? <laughs> I'm like, I, it's fine. I'm good. I don't need anything. Okay. So what I would like you guys to do is I just want you to listen for the situation and kind of think about how would you feel if you were in this person's shoes? But with great mercies will I gather thee. Not long ago, the wife of one of our grandsons was struggling spiritually. I will call her Jill. Despite fasting, prayer, and particular blessings, Jill's father was dying. She was gripped with fear that she would lose both her dad and her testimony. Late one evening, my wife, Sister Wendy Nelson, told me of Jill's situation. The next morning, Wendy felt impressed to share with Jill that my response to her spiritual wrestle was one word. The word was myopic. Jill later admitted to Wendy that initially she was devastated by my response. Okay. What's the situation? Um, that's probably understand it better than you of myopic then. Okay. Alan, we're gonna talk about that. Um, okay, what does myopic mean? Anybody know? Sorry, no, the, the optic part only refers to the eye. Okay, because it's optic, right? Optic eye. Oh my gosh, the tie into activity this morning. Okay, um, myopic means short sighted. I'm sorry, were you gonna give me the definition? You're the best, thank you. Wait, ah, Sophia, what's the definition of myopic? Well, I'm curious to see what it says. You have the website? It just says nearsighted. Okay, right, nearsighted. Um, what, what do I mean when I say nearsighted? If somebody's nearsighted, yeah? It just means they can't tell it too far away. Right, it's like they're okay with the, their hand right in front of their face. They're like, okay, but anything further than that, it's a little fuzzy. Yeah, you know, like I'm nearsighted, right? Isis is nearsighted. Um, it's it's pretty common, okay? So, I remember listening to this talk. Oh gosh, this was uh, October of 2018. I remember listening to this talk. I was leaving on my mission and like two weeks after that, not even. I remember sitting there and I'm like, yo, President Nelson, you're harsh, man. That was not what I would have said to somebody, okay? So, why do you think President Nelson would use this word talking about this granddaughter that's about to lose her dad? Why would he use that word? Again, keeping in mind that he's a prophet of God. Yeah. Um, he is prob he's probably referencing the fact that she is only thinking in this earthly life 
process beyond that. Okay. So what, what's the problem with that? What's the problem with only kind of thinking about right now? What, what kind of problems would that cause for her? Well, we're not only going to exist on this earth. There was the pre-mortal life and then there's um, something like the in-between where there's a, a, like a, a pain, a, a pool of some sort, and then there's uh, the past life that is the kingdom and uh, like heaven and hell. So our existence on this earth plane is only a part of that. It's not the entire thing. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Alan. Um, Hiram, thank you for playing pool on your phone. We're going to go play pool after this, okay? <laughs> Lawrence, what you think of? <clears throat> I would probably say the same that Alan is in danger, and she knows that uh, if we just uh, have the process for our sin and do things as a Heavenly Father, we're going to redeem that. So, if she had that perspective that you just said, how would that change kind of her thoughts and feelings about the situation? I think she'd be more happy for us. And she doesn't have, like, he doesn't have to live in agony anymore. He doesn't have to deal with the things of this world anymore. He doesn't have to worry about the trouble anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's a great perspective. And I think, and I'm saying this for me too. I think that's also an easy perspective to have when we're not in that situation, right? Um, and again, that's not just on you, that's just on everybody, right? Lady, what you think? No, it's good, I think that's a good perspective. Like, uh, she has a role to be in and she can take it from there and just try and take care of it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, who's ever gone rock climbing, ice climbing, uh, zip lining, coke course, anybody? Yeah, kind of. Sort of. Anything like super cool that you guys have done in relation to that? Okay. Um, so I rock climbed a little bit. I also, um, when I was growing up in the church, they still were doing uh, the Boy Scouts. And so there was this scout camp um, right near where I lived that was like one of the best camps in the state. They had the longest zip line in the state. It was awesome, it was like brand new. Everybody wanted to go to that camp because of that zip line. Um, now to get to that zip line, you gotta like walk up a hill and then you gotta walk up like 10 stories in this really tall tower. Um, but of course, cause we're on a zip line, you need a harness, right? So a lot of harnesses will just be um, around your waist. There's like two loops, you step into it like a pair of pants, you tighten around the waist. Some have shoulder straps too. It just kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, but all the, the tiny little 12, 13, 14 year old scouts, a lot of them were terrified of the zip line. They're like, there's no way. It like went over a lake. It was super high up in the air. Like it was awesome. It was kind of intense. Um, and so a lot of times these kids would climb the tower and they would not be able to let go and go off. Um, and they'd be like, man, I, this harness is gonna break. Like there's no way. And so what the instructors would do is they would grab them by their harnesses and lift them up in the air and be like, how much do you weigh? And they'd be like, uh, like 90 pounds. And they'd be like, all right, this harness can take up to 1500 pounds. Do you think it'll break? And they're like, well, I guess not. And then they go off the zip line, they have the greatest time, and then they're scared again, like right up at the tower, okay? So why, why wouldn't a 12, 13 year old kid need to be scared of a zip line if he's got the harness on? Why, why would he, why would he be scared? Why would he not? Yeah. Natural instincts. What was it? Natural instincts. Okay, yeah. walk me through that a little bit. So they like, usually if there's like a big height, like people aren't just gonna jump off of it, you die. So right, like self-preservation, right? Yeah, so you wanna save yourself by not doing it. Yeah, probably the one in, uh, instinct that is born with you, right? Don't jump off a cliff. 
Okay. Um, so why would that be comforting? Suddenly you have a harness or attached to something, you're gonna make that jump. Why is that better? Why would that be comforting? Right, like there's there's a small margin of error. Um, people that work um, in these situations, they do everything they can to take out any um, aspect of danger. They test their equipment. They're constantly doing maintenance. They check everything before anybody touches it. Um, so just because you're human, no matter how many times you've climbed or anything, you're gonna feel a little bit nervous when you get high. Um, I remember, and I would, used to do this a lot, is that if I was feeling nervous, I would just fall on purpose. Just so I knew that my harness got me. Um, I would feel way more confident knowing that, hey, my equipment works, and I would fall on purpose. And then I would be able to do whatever without a thought. Um, so with this in mind, let's keep going. Um, so what are some truths about God and his plan that can help Jill to not be so scared about what might happen in the future? What are some of those safety harnesses that can make her feel a little bit better or at least comfort her? Again, this is a horrible situation. We're not doing, like, we're not negating that at all. But what are some truths that could help her out? Okay. What are you guys thinking? What could help Jill out? Some things that you know about God and Jesus Christ. Remain what you're thinking, man. Why don't you choose somebody to, to figure that out for you? Not Matthias. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll pick. Uh, Peter, what you think, man? No, I love that. Um, what are some of your guys' favorite potato chips? This is going to make sense, yeah. Glaze. Like, Glaze? Uh, well, I mean, it's a brand, so I'm doing like the regular classic, like the yellow bag. The OG ones? What's wrong with that? So much. Kai, what are you thinking? I was thinking Ruffles, but I think Ruffles? That's worse. <laughs> what? Pringles. What? Pringles? Pringles, that's as bad. Zero flavor. Are you talking kettle? Okay, what's your brand fla flavor? Oh, fl flavor? Sure, um, I can't stand. I'm you? so mad. Kettle brand honey Dijon. Nice. Prove me wrong. It is so good. Uh, Eleven Pop knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Popcorn. It's so good. What? Popcorn is like. I'll respect that, Malia. Those are good. Those are good. The backyard barbecue are delicious. I'm like. Not sea salt and vinegar, but I kind of respect it. Robert? Kettle pickle. Kettle. Those are dang good. Okay, what? so what? <laughs> how do you know when you go pick out your favorite bag of chips at the store, how do you know that they're fresh? What? Uh, if they're potato chips. What do you... well, like, how do you know that it's a good unopened bag? If it's my <laughs> <laughs> I right, since you got the rest of the lesson, I'm out of here. Expiration date. Okay, expiration date, yeah. great. Well, uh, yeah, all of those. Also, my favorite chips are spicy Cheetos, so not the 
flame and high. Okay, yeah, I kind of respect it. Um, okay, so you guys know that when you buy a bag of chips, it's probably about half as full as it looks, yep. right? Yeah. The rice yes. is air, and there's a seal on it, right? Okay, that seal, I'm telling you, I don't know why they just don't make it the same for every snack ever, but sometimes it's impossible to open it up. You try to pop it, and then your Doritos like fly everywhere, and you cry a little bit. They're so hard. I don't know what they made it out of. Freaking Kevlar. It also like that's fair, right? So I'm kind of going along with Isis's thought that, hey, comfort for her would be knowing that her family was sealed, right? That that chip package cannot be opened at all. <laughs> That that is so firmly set that Jesus Christ puts his promise on that. That, hey, I have sealed you to your family. You will be with them again. Guaranteed, right? That was a roundabout, but we're going to go with it. Okay, I want everybody up. Let's go. I want you to write one word on the board. One word about something you know about God and Jesus Christ that can help you. Let's go. One word on this side of the board. Another one. Everybody needs to go. One word about uh, something about Emily Father and his son Jesus Christ that would help Jill. And just let that blue light just stare right into it. Did someone just write myopic on the board? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Okay. Um, thank you guys. Love it. Um, okay. I, that guy who says hip or help? Help. Oh, help. Yeah. Um, guys, I don't know why I'm seeing like different words. This looks like dressing. Okay. So, um, blessing, benevolent, myopic. One word. Whoever wrote that, I gotta talk to you later. Um, <laughs> Plan, love, helpful, merciful, blessing again, blessing, salvation, eternal faith, forever, praying, promises. Guys, I love that. That's so true. Um, we just have a couple, yeah, not even a couple of minutes. But, let's get this word again. Ah, oh, beautiful. I forgot I made this slide. Okay, so who, who feels like this sometimes? And this is like a principle of the gospel, like, you're going to suffer, but you better be happy about it, okay? Um, that can feel like the case. Um, but I want you guys to know that it's okay to be sad, to be depressed, to grieve, to feel bad about something. It just kind of comes with life. Jesus Christ, in no way, shape, or form, ever in the scriptures does he say, thou shalt not be sad. 
Um, things happen. Um, bad things happen to really good people. Um, challenges, questions, that question or challenge that you guys wrote down that you're thinking of, um, it's real. Um, Jesus Christ knows how you feel about it, and he's in a, in a really good, unique situation that he can help you with it. Um, we're going to try to continue this um, conversation a little bit tomorrow, but I can promise you guys that that challenge or question that you're going through right now will be resolved, will be answered. I don't know when. But something that Jesus Christ guarantees is that no matter the timing of that answer or solution, he promises you comfort, peace, and knowledge now. That is not a waiting time. He will comfort you now. No matter when that answer will come, comfort is now. Um, so I would encourage you guys to keep that question, that challenge in your mind. Um, so for tomorrow's preparation, all I need you to do is just I want, to, want you to keep that challenge and question in your mind. Think about what you need in your own situation, okay? Make sense? Beautiful. Um, nobody signed up for devotional today or tomorrow. So, Alan, don't give devotion tomorrow? You're the best, love your guts. Okay, um, Peter, choose someone for closing prayer, would you? Yeah, choose. Johnny, let's go, man. You pray a lot. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the blessings you have left upon us. Thank you for making sure that we land here safely. Please bless us at school. We have a great day at school or wherever you must go. Please bless our Prophet Russell and Russell. Please bless our Bishop Shoshi Russell. Please bless our fellow men and women and five blood healing. Please bless our missionary. Please forgive us for all things. We love you, my sins, and name. Amen. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, guys. Love your guts. Make a choice, man. All right, remember, we got Devo tomorrow.